Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Business Essentials Workshop with a theme, How to Thrive During Challenging Times. Before we start, I'd like to introduce you to um, the Chamber, talk a bit about our, our vision and our mission. So, the Greater Austin Asian Chamber of Commerce has the vision to be the leading partner for driving local economic growth for businesses with ties to Asia and Asian Americans. We are a private nonprofit membership driven organization comprised of over 700 businesses, civic organizations, and passionate individuals. Our mission is to promote the Asian Pacific American community as a catalyst for local and global economic growth through advocacy, connections, and education. We also have, have several services and programs for our members. Our three monthly reoccurring programs are Business Essential Workshop, like the one we are conducting today in a webinar format. We also have a women's club. They get together every month. And this is a wonderful opportunity in an intimate setting for women entrepreneurs and uh, um, folks from the community to get together, make friends, support one another, and network. And then we have our member mixers. These are a very fun social um, themed event. Um, and there's always opportunity to network and uh, make new friends, build your business, and our upcoming member mixers have a theme, an international uh, market briefing uh, theme, and um, is part of our mission to make Austin global. So today our speakers are Lok Dang, who, are the, who is the founder and managing partner of Dang Law Group, and Adeline Bui, who is the CEO of Capital Mortuary and Eternal Peace Funeral Services. These business experts will talk about how to become a successful business owner, avoid pitfalls, and overcome challenges. And the topics include business startup challenges and pitfalls, why it's important to put the right people in the right position, problem solving and solutions, prioritization, tips and tricks, and pivoting towards success during a pandemic. They will uh, provide a case study so this is going to be an interactive um, presentation. So feel free to ask questions and uh, and engage with the presenters. And of course, none of our programs and services will be pop would have, would be possible without our corporate sponsors. So thank you to everyone on this list. We're also on all of the social media platforms. So please engage with us, check out our posts, share them, and be a part. And if you are not a member yet, we'd like to encourage you to join us. And uh, you can scan this QR code and fill out the forms, or if you'd like to know more, please email us and ask us our, ask your questions. We'd be happy to answer them and tell you about all the benefits of being a chamber member. And with that, I will pass it on to Lisa. Okay, so just to uh, re go over that one more time, we're gonna go ahead and start. And the first question uh, we're gonna address is what are some of the start challenges you have when starting up a business? And we'll start with Locke. Um, he can answer that question about how to start up. He has a law firm and a real estate development company. Yeah. Hi, hello, everyone. It's Locks here. Uh, starting up a law business, uh, one of the biggest challenges, law school uh, didn't teach anything about starting up a business. And uh, we, we studied law, we talked to people. However, when I first started the practice, I had no clue how to start a practice. Uh, so those are the challenges that you have to uh, overcome. A business plan, talk to family members, that's the general stuff. Uh, the hard stuff is, you know, finding the direction that you, uh, as, as a startup, 
uh, to, to head. Uh, biggest challenge is, is there enough capital? Uh, how do you do marketing? How do you uh, even build a client? Um, those are things that I had to overcome. Um, and one of the challenges I learned is, you know, how to build relationship uh, with maybe uh, your clients, maybe your coworkers, maybe your employees. Uh, so I think that the best way to start is, you know, just dig into it and be prepared to fail. Uh, and, and once you you fail enough time, there the, it builds confidence. I think the challenge of new uh, entrepreneurs they're too afraid to fail, uh, and and you know some some of the questions we can prepare for everything, but if you can't take the lead and uh, dive into it, uh, those are things that you can overcome. Uh, Ain't Alec? Hi, I think this is Adeline. So Locke is so true. College, school, or whatever it is that you came from do not prepare you for entrepreneurship or how to get ready to create a, a business, whatever that is. But to create a business, you have to know what it is that you're doing. You have to know it inside and out. You have to have the passion for it. So during the process of determining what you want to establish in terms of a new business is uh, uh, research, ask questions, go to seminars, get as much information as you can so that you can start asking the right questions. And then you start building your confidence. You start building your passion for what it is that you're doing. And your passion and how you present yourself in front of people is going to transfer. And they're going to see and they want to buy into what it is that you are wanting to create. And those, those things you're going to hear all the time, do not let those, those no's discourage you. Keep going. This is your passion. You keep on going. Even though every door shuts and everyone say, you've got the craziest idea. This is not going to happen. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the support of your families, your friends, and that you believe in the, or the services that you are wanting to create, that's all that matters. Just try. And like Rock said, you're going to fail. And it's okay. It's, there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. It's more, it's a bath of honors. Because what it is, is it teaches you how to overcome the barriers and the next barriers because you will continue to have... Even after, you know, locking the test, a successful business, you're still going to fail. You're still going to make mistakes. But that's the part of, fun part of having your own business is you learn. It, it's never the same day and it continues and just you've got to keep going. That's the key. It's keep going. Keep being motivated. Great. Um, and this is a question for both of you guys. Um, when starting a business, what would you say um, would, was the first and most important thing do you need can you touch on a little bit on um like maybe the difference between getting an llc or uh, how to how to get that business started what yeah. what paperwork you might need yeah so you know, so you gotta look at your what your business is uh are you do you have partners do you have investors do you have or if you're a sole proprietor uh stuff like that you have to maybe sit down to uh, talk to a lawyer or if funding and capital is a problem you have to research yourself what you're trying to do for example if you want to have a partner uh you know i see a lot of people uh joining business for the wrong reason with partners hey i have a friend let's just join it sounds like a good idea um you know so but no one ever talk about how the business structure is. Uh, there's going to be some hard questions in a partnership. Uh, how do you exit? What if there's a dispute? Uh, what if there's no money left? What do you do? A capital contribution. All the hard stuff they don't want to discuss. However, they want to discuss, oh, everything's going to be so so open. Everything's going to be so successful. And guess what happened when when uh, when things go bad? Well, you know, then uh, friendships get ruined, uh, stuff like that. So that you you have to be prepared to ask the tough question, uh, to go out there and see what's out there. And I, I I can't stress how many lawsuits that I have to work with uh, where friends are suing each other just because they never uh, talk upon. So in in any relationship and in any business, it's for the best interests of the company. So if uh, if you go on it on on feelings and stuff like that, it's not going to work. I see so many failures out there. Uh, but the true success business, it's all about coming up with a strategy. So it's for the business. Uh, even relationship comes secondary to what the best interest of the company or what relationship or business product that you're doing. Great. Eddie, do you have any more tips to add on what some of the most important things are when you first start out? 
Yes, uh, Locke touched on it originally. Capital, you have to be, you have to ask those really hard questions. It's like, do I have enough money? Now you hear a lot of these, you know, um, millionaire success stories where they had only $500 to start. That's just in the books. That's only in the movies. It really doesn't happen in real life unless you you are just a genius and just got really, really lucky. But you know, in, in any businesses, it's not, you're not, you're not trying to be lucky. You're trying to succeed. And with that, you have to understand if you're going to do this, what does that mean, you know, in terms of your savings, in terms of, you know, who do you have to borrow from? Uh, are, are you capable of borrowing from banks? I mean, what are all these different options that are available to you? You definitely want to set yourself up to succeed. And this is the one place that you want to make sure that there, you have enough capital because there's a lot of business and Locke and I have seen it where we, you know, people come in strong, but then it fizzle out. And I've, I've been there where you, you did not anticipate, you know, uh, months to get your business to where it needs to be. And then you're using your savings and then you're down to just basically bleeding. And what do you do? So be realistic. Also acknowledge that there is a possibility of that failure, but how do you come out of that? So always have a plan B and sometimes even a plan C. Excellent, excellent. Okay, we don't have any questions yet, so we'll keep going. Um, the next question is, um, how do you decide where to put the right people? And Locke, I know at our firm right now, we, we have struggled to hire. Hiring is tough right now. So how do you decide you know, who, who you're gonna hire and then what position you're gonna put them in? Yeah, before we talk about that, I think uh, we have to reflect on, as the business grow, I, uh, my challenge was uh, you know, growing from a, a one-man team and as we were growing to two employees, three employees, we're at 28 employees now overall, three locations. So the challenge was to actually know how to manage people uh, and know how to uh, understand people, how to talk to people. In, in a small firm or in any small business, it's easy because you have that relationship talking to one or two people. However, when you, as you grow, and the, the look of me is I, get, I got to grow into it versus where I have to, uh, you know, uh, someone placed me with a bunch of uh, employees or managers that I have to work with. I grew into it. And it, even with that, the, the challenge are you might have to get help. Uh, how? Uh, I didn't think that I had to have an HR department or, a, or department lies uh, all the employees. Uh, what happened is, you know, I, I actually had to go out there and sometimes uh, learning a business uh, it takes hiring consultants. Uh, luckily, we're able, we're successful enough to be able to afford to get the consultants uh, as we grow. Uh, so once you do that, uh, you know they, they come in to help you. Uh, each person, uh, what I learned from uh, uh, as we're growing is each employee or each person communicates differently. So if it's a one size fit all, uh, then it's sometimes to motivate people you got to know, understand how to communicate with people. And that goes back to the relationship uh, field as far as you have to develop as a, as a boss, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, so you have to feel each person differently to know what, what, what's their strong point, their, their weak point. Uh, and it takes over time to uh, uh, develop those skills. And I think based on a lot of failures, a lot of letting people go, uh, a lot of bringing new people in, I think that you, you will feel comfortable with that. Great. Okay. And then Addie, um, with a business, you know, prioritizing is very important. And um, how do you choose with everything, um, the eternal peace and doing the crematory? How do you help prioritize your day? How do you, you know, prioritize different tasks um, when you're going about with the business? Well, there's no such thing as eight to five in the business that you own. It's basically 24-7, 365, and all you're hoping for is extra hours and extra days. But a, it really comes down to understanding your scheduling, uh, meetings that you have, important meetings that you have. Uh, um, and basically, there's going to be lots and lots of days where you don't have time to eat. But it, it's one of those things that, you know, it's, it's, this, it's a small cost that you have to do to really focus on driving your business and having a system, um, you know, you, having a, a, a big staff that do their job 
and you have a system that moves uh, um, the, the workload uh, uh, or whatever services that you are providing, it has to, it has to be movement. And so you're, you're relying on your staff, you're relying on your system, you're relying on your software, you're relying on a lot of stuff to help you. So it's not just your time. I mean, if you are dependent 100% on your time and not trusting the people that you have in, uh, in place, not utilizing the, the, the resource and the software and the procedures that you have, then you're, you're really going to work yourself to death. So really look and try to find uh, uh, support again, with staff and also software uh, applications um, or have procedures or system or having some, some way to, to help organize and manage. And if you're doing it, everything by yourself, um, when you first start, it's great. But when you start realizing your time is stretched and you don't have as much uh, hours in the day, then you, gotta, you have to look back and reflect and see what am I doing wrong? Uh, and what do I need to do to change this and so that you don't fall into that uh, um, the pitfalls of, of trying to just you know manage day to day yeah. I, I have something to add on that Lisa I, as, uh, I have a client that that came to me and, uh, they're a startup they're so worried about um, uh, getting their uh, copyright getting their uh, pants uh, uh, to, uh, through uh, and they were pushing that so much and they, that's their highest priority However, they were not neglecting all the operational stuff. Uh, like, so you as an entrepreneur has to uh, decide uh, what is more important, you know? Was that the operation, the people coming in, uh, you know, getting this product uh, to market or, or are you attacking all your resources on uh, copyright or patent this, uh, this product that you, you, you think is the most brilliant idea? Uh, the biggest question you always, I, I learned is in any business that you create, uh, do will someone else would they buy that business so you have to set it up uh you know where eventually uh would an investor or a venture capitalist or anyone who look at your your business product would they want to to acquire this so those are things that you and it could be unique to every business to every operation from restaurants to tech to law firm to a mortuary or or funeral service it's it's a core to it yes Okay, that is great, great advice, guys. I know you guys uh, are great at prioritizing and we have so much, both of you guys stay so busy. So um, it's kudos to both of you. Uh, the next question is about problem solving and, and get finding solutions. So um, I know that at the law firm, we problem solve all day long. Um, and then Addie, I'm sure you have that as well. So do you guys want to kind of touch a little bit on that topic and how you how you basically, I guess, get the problem, go through it, and then find a solution and then implement the plans? I think you're pretty good, Ali. You can start on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is, you know, when the problem arise, you start, you know, scrambling and, and start just, you know, thinking the worst thing. Sometimes it takes a leader, a good leader, to step back when everything is just, you know, chaotic and you you have to remove yourself from the situation. Sometimes it's very, very hard because this is your baby. This is, this is you know, you, you probably breathe in this for months, years, and it's hard to remove yourself from the situation, but that's why the best thing you can do is step back and then look through it in a different lens. And then from there, you, you, you will have to make a lot of hard decisions. And sometimes it's probably not decisions that you want to do uh, or you want to, to even consider, but it, it does. Uh, like for instance, my, I had a, a bar and of course pre-pandemic, it was open, great. And then everything shut down. Well, here's my problem. What am I going to do? And I remember Locke was like, Adeline, how is it that you're not, you know, crumbling, crying? It's like, what does that do? What does that solve? What does that help anyone? You know, I have a mortgage. I have, you know, kids I have to worry about. I have bills. What can I do? So all I was looking for was solutions. I, just, I never allow my, myself any, any moment to even think about the failure or, or, or where I am. And, and I think if you allow yourself that pitfall, it's, it's just basically going down the wrong path. And so I, I had to, I don't want to say think positive because there was nothing positive about the situation, but I had to think outside the box. 
I had to figure out, you know, what we need to do. Believe me, Locke and I, we brainstormed, we, we thought about everything under the sun and nothing made sense because we never really had dealt with the pandemic and, and how much it affects every one of us on a global level, even, you know, a, a small level within our own corporation and my own business. But uh, removing yourself and then really being honest and saying, well, this business is dead. Can I start something else? And really, it, it's one of those very hard questions because you don't want to let go of your baby. Sometimes it's you sink together or, you know, I hate to say is but you may have to sacrifice one business to allow another business to grow and prosper. Yeah. Uh, I want to touch upon that. I, I think the three main things uh, in any core uh, to be successful was so I mentioned how to develop relationship. The second thing is uh, I feel that it's the attitude. I, uh, for, for most of my uh, beginning before the law practice, I was a serial business opener, but never a bunch of failures. Uh, just because the attitude it's like, oh, I can't do this. Uh, I can't overcome this. Why, why is there so many problems? Like, uh, you know, like I just saw one problem. Why, you know, why is there another problem coming up? How do I deal with this? Uh, I think the biggest challenge was the attitude before was, uh, I can't do this. Uh, now, as you, you fail so much and uh, you, you rely on people that, you know, that you think that's going to help you and they nothing matures or, and, and the attitude, once the attitudes uh, that you think that you're going to fail or that you can't overcome it, what happens is you, you're not going to make it. And then sometimes uh, a situation like the pandemic where the bar is coming in, it's the uh, clients, you know, like maybe your bank account got hit or so, something crazy happened and you're like, it's too overwhelming. Uh, and if you look at it overall, it is overwhelming. But if you keep chipping in it away, little by little, so you can get through it. Uh, I felt that by with those challenge and I, uh, you know, if I look at, you know, there was a time where I'm like, Adeline or Lisa, I'm like, I can't handle this. I, I'm just going to walk away from this. Uh, but you know what? And you're thinking that you, you already decided you're a business owner. If you can't, if you can't solve this problem, who's going to solve it for you? So you, once you already decide that you're the business owner or entrepreneur, you got to realize you have to have the confidence that you're the, the buck stops with you. And you know what? You can cry to no one. And then, uh, if you're too negative with your employees or or the sick or the ship is sinking, guess what? The whole team's gonna feel like, oh man, if the boss is going down, I'm going down. So you have to keep smiling, keep attacking, make sure that there's enough money in the bank to cover the loss. Uh, and if you don't, you have to have the confidence to go in there, and knock on doors, say, I need to borrow something to get over this link. And I think uh, you know, if you can develop that attitude. That that you can overcome everything. I think I think that's where you uh, succeed or uh, towards it. Well, like I said earlier, no, no's are not really no in the business. As a business owner, we do not accept no. No is just another you know word for well, you know, let me think about it. Uh, but again, uh, Locke said, you know, as a business owners, the, the buck's up with you, and everyone looks to you when there when there is chaos and when things are falling. And so that's when you have to, you know, show them the leadership. And that leadership means, you know, there is a solution. Believe me, there is a solution. Even though you think that there isn't, there's always a solution. But you have to, you have to believe your, your, your staff, your, your uh, uh, employees, everyone. And they have to know that there's confidence that you can get them out of the situation. And, and with that, you built your own. So you don't, again, fall into that pitfall of just negative. You have to think of the positive and just think outside the box. Sometimes it's not the prettiest, uh, uh, um, you know, process, but it's definitely much, it's very much needed. We have, great, we have a question from Alex. So I'm going to um, read the question. Alex is a um, successful eye doctor and has several offices. Um, he, they feel that they just don't have enough time to focus and uh, grow that business um, as much as, the, as, as much as they want to grow it, they want to grow it fast, but they feel like with balancing work, life, and kids, it's been a struggle to get it moving. Um, how do you, how is it possible to grow your business faster or more efficient when you're balancing home life and kids? 
actually no one no one understand you know balance of life more than i do um i lock touched on it earlier you actually start having to look for third party or outsource for help unless you wanted to bring someone in when you have to understand the operation side of the business it can mean a lot of stuff meaning the day-to-day -day management but it also could mean you know how do you uh, um how do you market how do you basically expand your business well that's not something that you probably hire someone or even you have your own personal experience or have training on so that is where you start looking to say okay well what is it that you wanted to expand on? You wanted to do multiple locations? Uh, uh, are you wanting to be bigger? You want to have clients? I mean, what is it? What does expansion mean to you? It, it means a, a differently for different people. So if it's something uh, for you, it's multiple locations, you know, more clients or whatever, well, you know, you cannot be your own marketing person. You, 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 you know, cannot be involved in everything, uh, 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 in every aspect of that business. So hire someone or even look into third parties to help you market, expand. I mean, that's how um, Lisa came into our firm. You know, Locke and I, we were out there pounding doors, you know, and walking the pavements on a regular basis, making network connections and meeting people. But it was not very productive because there's only one of us, but then there's also problems with the office. What do we do? You know, we can't be in two places at the same time. So that was when we made a commitment. It's like, we really do need another department that that's the only one priority is to go out there to bring in business to market. So that way we can manage the operational side of it. And so that's where now you can, you can manage family, work and everything. Yes, it means more expenses, but it's a, it's a necessary expense that is worth investing because now that department is bringing in revenue that you couldn't generate by yourself because there wasn't enough time in the day to do all that. Yeah, I, I, I want to add it. Uh, I, I always thought that we're boxed in, uh, you know, for growth. And it's what, what difference does it take uh, for me from a, a law firm that has one employee versus many uh, or, or multiple locations and stuff? Uh, there was an investment in infrastructure. Uh, creating a system, uh, and and I, I have to uh, give credit to uh, the the business consultant. Uh, I I was uh, challenged putting where I don't know how to grow a second third location. How do I control that? Uh, and uh, in situation where like that, and there's only one of me. How how do I balance my life? Because I want to go out. Uh, or am I stuck with all this business? Uh, so when you got to a point where business is good, where you can grow multiple location, that means you have to look at yourself hard to say, you know what? I'm not good at this. Maybe I need help. I, I can afford to get this person on board, that person on board uh, to help me put a system together. Uh, the How am I able to maintain the, the three office plus the real estate? Now I... I I'm in a position where I create, where I'm going working for is I present, uh, I create a vision and then find the uh, people. And it's going to be ongoing to find out those people to follow in, uh, to create your vision and, and to have those, make sure that you clearly communicate your vision and think about all the, uh, the little uh, bridge to make those vision. How do I keep on the third, second, third store, how do we keep the operation to be uh, uniform with all the core values of the, the uh, your main centers? Uh, so those are things you have to take back and see. And you know what? It's very expensive to uh, to grow, but once you get there and the operation is smooth, once you get there, it's different. But you know, on the way to build it, if it's easy, everyone's going to do it. And then either you're stuck with a one man team or one store team, or versus three or four locations. You, know, it's all up to the the boss or the, you know, you're, you're, you're the visionary. Um, on, so adding, a, adding more to kind of Alex's question and you guys have both touched on it and me, I've worked with other businesses and have seen this. I think a lot of business owners are afraid to spend money. Um, but I think you both would agree. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. So can you give um, the young entrepreneurs some, um, I guess encouragement that it is okay sometimes to spend to spend money to make money and kind of touch on that whether it's Google marketing that kind of stuff for your business. Well, well Locke mentioned it earlier. You have when you when you get there, you know, and you by knowing means you have, you can afford it. And 
just like anything uh, um, new marketing, it takes a few months and sometimes it may, may take several months to see the return on your investment. It's not right away, and like, you know, if you have a product or something like that. Um, some some places it will take a little bit of time, but you got to make sure you be that you're able to afford that new expansion, whatever that is, bringing in a consultant or hiring a, a, a create a whole new department, whatever it is. But you have to be ready for it, and and you you have to look at your own business. And sometimes you know it's like, well, things are so good right now. You know, why why should we open up and you know create more expenses for us? And then that that question comes back, like, well, what are you trying to expand to? What are you trying to grow to? Because if you don't even know where you want to go next, then you know what's the point of uh, uh, of even considering any options at all? So you 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 have to always be three to five steps ahead of whatever you're at right now. You have to plan ahead. I, I tell people, you know, when I talk to them, it's like, what's your one, three, five, seven years plan? If you have those, then it, it, it's almost like an outline of where you need to go and, and if you're on uh, you're on the right, right path or not. And when you get there, you're going to realize that you can't expand or you can't expand, but you have to create those, uh, those goals yeah. And I, I want to add, uh, as your business expand, and if you're looking, you know, your your good business stuff, you have to reflect on your operation. Uh, I give you guys an example. Uh, when, you know, I, I had the same accounting uh, methods uh, for a one to three person uh, 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 people, uh, law firm. And I once I got to a bigger accounting system, I was still uh, outdated on the three to five uh, uh, employees, uh, you know, business structure. However, I, I was obsolete, and it took me a drastic, uh, you know, you know, getting uh, my bank account uh, compromised by hackers and stuff to realize, you know what, I have to change. And and as a, as a you know, and like going back to uh, you know, following where all your accounting stuff is, like you know, it, it took so much time. So now when something else happened, uh, it took in, it's painful uh, to change what you already know. So the question as an entrepreneur, can you adapt? to, to uh, your changing business environment and your changing business. If you, you know, you, and, and you think, oh, hey, I got to this level, I make this X money, it stops. No, it's just, it's a, a continual. If you want to be successful, you want to be competitive, you have to ask yourself, am I adapting to the c correct thing, you know, or am I just happy where we at? So those are something that you should uh, uh, question yourself. Um, the next question is about and we've touched on the sum, but mistakes that you've made starting your business. So could you give a really specific, maybe example, each of you of uh, one mistake you made and how you learned from it? Oh, I know, Locke and I, we both yeah. went I, into this. I, you I, put I, money in and you don't realize it. And yeah. you just so lost so it all. I, uh, <laughs> let me start with that. I, and I both, uh, Allie and I have, uh, you know, business ideas always. And there's some that was, bad ideas that we, uh, uh, and, but this, this one I want to touch upon. I think the most important thing is, you know, make business decision on your facts. Don't assume stuff. Uh, uh, sometime I, when I, I, I had a successful law business. So next question, Hey, I'm so successful. I'm gonna jump into this development, real estate, building out uh, centers. Cause I see everyone else doing it. Now I'm successful in this business. I'm going to jump into, uh, open this. And I think that because I, I, I thought I had the confidence and the, the know-how to jump one industry to another, I can overcome it. Uh, you know, it, it nearly bankrupt uh, the whole firm uh, just because I invested so much on something I don't know, to build out houses, to uh, get permits, pick the right, wrong person. Uh, I wasn't the, the right boss for it. And so what I'm trying to tell everyone is, you know, make sure that your facts, you're making decision on facts, not uh not not because how you feel or someone told you is a good idea and then you went on with it and you thought all these things uh you know you you have to make it yeah you, know, you have to ask all the question uh, is the facts right so that you can come up with the uh, conclusion i think that my what uh, that changes me is uh i got the to the solution or the answer before doing the math so i tried to gear everything into the successful box when i realized uh, you know, I made some bad turns, picking the right, uh, pr wrong person, uh, uh, going with gut uh, feelings when the facts are uh, not there for me to make. Uh, those are things. And uh, if you don't have enough capital to recover, 
it's very dangerous uh, that what you're encountering on. So uh, look for the facts. Well, uh, you know, earlier I mentioned, you know, before you go into any business, you have to know that business inside and out, meaning that you have to know every aspect of it, not, not just the good, like, oh, this is a million dollar idea or a billion dollar industry or whatever it is. It's not, you have to be willing to, to understand the whole gambit from good to bad, all of it, and willing to face it and and listen to the to your people around you not naysayers saying hey don't do it don't look but really listen to the one that say hey what if the one that's actually doing the playing the devil's advocate and you're like oh no it's easy i'm gonna succeed really stop and think and actually work through the whole process and see yourself from begin to and seeing if it's a real issue i think a lot of us what we do is that you know we 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 buy into our own dreams and we forget, you know, that there are failures and but there's also success. However, we have to be real to ourselves and we have to also understand that we don't have the answers when we can't see the future. But all we can do is whatever information we have at that time, we try to make the best decision. Locke said it, don't go with don't don't make decisions based on what you feel, but more educational, you know, decisions, things that has numbers, facts, proof. Now, if it's one of those things, just, you just don't have that option or, or, that, uh, uh, or that capability, then talk to other people. Sometimes having good uh, um, advisors as friends, they, they, they pose the question because one, they're not in the business, so they're not jaded, they're not you know, blinded by, uh, uh, or they don't understand your business. So they ask a very you know, elementary question, but it also, a question that you don't want to ask because it's like oh, that's a failure question no let them ask and then really think about it and then seeing if that is that is truly an issue or can you you know can you actually overcome that so really listen to all the voices that comes in when things aren't you know uh, uh if it sounds too good to be true listen to all the voices uh don't don't Sometimes our ego gets the best of us, and I think that comes with confidence. We we tend to it's like, oh yeah, I can get us out of this easily. No, it, it you never know which direction the problem is going to come. But just have an open mind and just be willing to listen to just other people. Not necessarily tell you what to do, but pose the question. If they're asking you a question, then there's a there's a problem. What's the answer? So really dig into it and use facts as much as you can, and not. Uh, uh, personal, you know, feelings. Yeah. Thank you. We have a question from Jimmy. As y'all, as you guys were building your teams, what was one of the biggest mistakes you made when building the team? Hmm. Letting go a team members when they're not pulling their weight. I think that's the biggest thing is finding talented people is already hard. Keeping talented people is even harder, but also letting go of wrong people is the key to sometimes we feel like you know we're we're so uh, uh, appreciative that they came to us and they they're providing us they're part of our team however when when we realize that they're really not a solution to to our business they're actually a problem to our business realizing it early and getting rid of that because that's a cancer that can grow internally and slowly until it gets to the point where you're losing good people over a bad person. So knowing when to cut someone is important as much as finding the right person. I, I, I think um, I, growing the business, what, what happened was I, I never create a structure uh, uh, for the employees. I think that uh, you know, as a small business owner, I just, every, you think everyone's doing uh, everything. They're, 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 they're looking for your best interests and this and that. I, I, I fail miserably at first to create a structure. And, you know, as we've gotten fat, uh, uh, larger, uh, that's why you have to recognize yourself. Is your structure, uh, uh, you know, they, they understand your structure, not just because of a handbook, uh, constant meeting. Uh, you know, the, uh, one, one of the biggest thing is if your employees are going off one direction and you thought you go in this direction and uh, as the further you go, what happens? You know, the, the rubber band will break and then you can't, it's too much to come back to, to, to the structure. So develop the structure. Uh, 
I, I th th those are the challenges I have. And l letting go people, uh, that's one thing. But before the letting go people, did you have to ask your question? Did you provide enough uh, training? Did you provide enough communication? Did you provide enough leadership uh, to them uh, so that they can understand what you want uh, the direction to go? So you have to, if all those things fail, the employees are negative, you can't save them, then you, uh, I, I, and you know what? Still to this day, I, I still have issues with letting people go. I, I get emotionally attached and uh, there's mm -hmm. so many times where I had to let them go, but because of the relationship, it just uh, kept on going and I let it drag on too long. And sometimes the solution is to let them go and bring other talents in. And it could be right there and you're like, wow, why did I do this so long ago? And, uh, and it's, it's a tough call as a boss to, uh, to do that. And uh, to this day, I, I hate doing it. Well, that's the emotional side of it. Remember the previous question was, what do you do? Don't make decisions based on emotions. Emotions are great. You know, it makes, it, it's, it makes you human. However, it's a business. End of the day, you have to say, I'm sorry, but this is business, you know, and it, it's the hardest decision you can make, but it's the best decision for the business. Yeah, and Jimmy has a follow-up question on that. Um, so making, how do you ensure you don't let the wrong person go? And can you touch on how you measure their performance? Like, how do we, how, how do we measure performance at? Well, here? I know, I know when I was with Locke, uh, you know, we have uh, performances that we have to meet, which is basically generating revenue into the firms. So I, I, I would have meetings with him and I'm like, Locke, if your staff is not generating three to four times what you're paying them, then they are an expense to you. And staff, we already are an expense, but we don't need to be. Uh, we're, if, if our, our, our business was mainly services. So that means they should be generating revenue for us. And if they're not, then what's wrong? And so when we realized that there are people that weren't performing, and when you have a blog like Locke does, people do hide among others. When it's just one or two, it's very easy. You can basically point the finger at at the person that's failing. But when you have a lot of people, it's very easy to hide in the midst of everyone and just kind of coast by and just, you know, be done. But that's where you actually have to have management and, and as a boss, look to see who's actually producing and who's not. And realizing when they become an expense and not a, uh, not a, de a revenue generated for you, and that's where, one, you got to find out what happened. Sometimes it could be family problems. Sometimes it could be they're just not motivated. They just don't care. They're just there to clock in, clock out. That's it. But those aren't the ones that you want. You want those that are willing to go with you, work, you know, uh, uh, perform at their top levels and not just coast by. And then if they do, then they're not fit for a growing business. Now, if you're a business that is just happy and content and you are, are you know, you're, you're fine with everyone there, then yeah, that's fine. But if you're wanting to grow, you have to identify when your staff is not producing anymore. Great. We have another question from you know, biz, all business owners. Um, and I love Addie's Well, it's a morbid story. No one likes to hear it, but I love telling it though. Um, so I had, I had two very successful bars, very busy, you know, bars uh, pre-pandemic. And then of course, the moment it shut down, you know, I'm at the mercy of the state. Oh, can't open it's a it's a super spreader you know and my events are you know 500 people uh, on a weekend at any given time so of course you know when we were shut down for two months I, I I didn't know what to do I can't generate anything I mean it's we're an event center so people aren't really coming to us as a um you know like a neighborhood bar or you know support your local uh, favorite uh, restaurants mom and pop it wasn't like that at all so we didn't have that regulars to keep us going so Tough question had to be asked, and unfortunately, I had to go through a, a, a family death, my father, for me to realize that there was an opportunity for me to basically give birth to a new business, 
and that was turn, converting my, my, my beautiful bar into a funeral facility. I demo everything during the pandemic. I, I basically, I, I went with my, I, I researched, I researched for weeks and I, I've talked to so many people and there were a lot of people say, don't do it. You're crazy. You know, and again, you know, I, I went with my, what I knew, which is the numbers, the numbers didn't lie. And so when I made that decision, it's been the best decision, you know, that I've made. I think this is like my favorite career so far and uh, my favorite business so far. It, it really does bring you, you know, I'm given a service that's definitely is needed at any given time. And no one wants to go through losses. But at the same time, I had to go through my own loss to realize it was an opportunity. And so this is, here's the thing about businesses. It doesn't come just because, you know, you were like, oh, this is glamorous. I want to do this and I want to plan this. Sometimes those business ideas comes to you at the weirdest hours and strangest time. You just got to listen to it and, and do your research. And when things start clicking in and things start really making sense, then you have to, you're, you're all in. I mean, you have to put your whole passion into it. Um, that's how I came to start the, the funeral business. But then other doors open for me, the mortuary, the crematory start opening for me because these were people that I work with now. So now I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in a very, um, I want to say, uh, uh, a good industry where, again, we're uh, um, recession proof. <laughs> uh, we always have clients. I hate to say that, but, you know, again, it's just one of those things that sometimes letting go of that glamorous job and accepting the next opportunities when you see it, it's worth it because it, it's life changing. Yeah, I, I want to touch upon that what Alan did. I she uh, she opened a business, multi million dollar business, opened a bar, has a big SBA loan on it, and uh, for her, uh, I, I know that I sat down with her on the you know mortgage is X amount of money. How am I going to recover? How does I? I sat there and I actually have no solution. It's like wow, what do we do next? Uh, I, I I do commend Alan to making that tough decision to spent so so much money building this club and then to demolish everything inside worth five six seven hundred thousand to go and pivot and go some other direction which she has no experience about and she's the idea that's i don't think a lot of people can go from a bar business uh to to a premium business and to touch upon that hopefully Adam allows me i have to talk to an sba attorney uh there there to explain to them that hey, you borrowed money for a bar. Now you went to a uh, to a funeral <laughs> business, and and that was a very uncomfortable conversation. And and Alan came in in that conference and say, well, you know what? Uh, having a bar, you have DJs in the service business, and the uh, in the funeral business, is it not a service business? Uh, providing, yeah. you know, instead of DJs, you're providing the service of funeral. And I, so, I'm a glorified event center. It's pretty much all yeah. that I do. I, so, I plan events, both jobs. <laughs> so we we heal off, uh, uh, you know, or for you know any violation on the SBA uh, contracts, but so that they can you know and and back to the thing, you know, like things hit you. How are you able to convince people, loan lenders, uh, everyone else uh, to 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 you know go with this route and then. Uh, we, we were able to, uh, you know, uh, explain that to the SBA lender so that we can be allowed to do it. And uh, I, I, it was not an easy decision. And I don't think yeah. that, you know, even in my 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 business experience, I, I don't think I could have pulled the trigger if I was in that position to see everything's knocked out. That's it. Okay, we have two um, two questions we'll address um, waiting, and then and, and we'll wrap it up. And Addie, thank you. Locke, thank you. But uh, we'll we'll address these. So Alex has another question. Um, he wanted to know: do, do you recommend hiring a business coach, a biz, or a business manager with experience, or do you think it's better to train somebody from scratch and start there? Um, also, how do you avoid potentially negative management from the new man new I business? I can answer that one. I, you only know what you know. So if you hire a business manager with the inside, they still didn't listen to you. And you're still going the, the same direction of they're going to follow your leadership. And you're, uh, you know, you can get to a situation where each 
decision you make can cost, and each wrong turn will cost you more money than hiring a consultant. Uh, so, and the other thing was, it was my ego. I, why would I get a coach? You know, I should be knowing everything. I should be doing it. I should read. This is the thing. But, you know, your, your experience, your knowledge is only to that level. And uh, another person that has no affiliation to your business or loyalty to challenge you, I think that's the best way to go get the business coach and interview some of them. And, uh, you know, and when I got the coach, my biggest problem was I didn't trust him. Like, who is this guy? Why am I letting them know my financials? Like, who, you know, this, there was a, it was a struggle uh, for me letting go. Uh, and I think that the, the coach thing was, uh, even though it cost a little money, I think it was the best decision I made uh, to someone having someone outside versus uh, uh, so they can reflect on that. Thank you. Um, and then. Hi, Lisa. I just have to let everyone know here. This has been so wonderful. We have two minutes left. Okay. So this will have to be the last question, but it's been just fantastic. So I'll be real quiet, but we have two minutes left. Thank you okay. so much. We have one more question from Min. Um, he said, asked about uh, employee retainment. It's very difficult these days. Um, do you have solutions and strategies to improve work culture and encourage a fun environment versus a toxic environment? I I'll say one thing real quick on this because I, one of the reasons I came to work for this law firm is because I, I could automatically tell I had such a great culture um, and, and work environment from where I came from. And we, yes, we do do fun things. I actually help, I'm kind of the planner of, it's important to do team building things, uh, work happy hour now and again, and get the staff engaged because then they feel vested and they want to do better for you. But I will also let Locke and Addie touch on this. Yeah. Well, I, well, I know that, you know, just the staff, they're they're, they're eight hours a day. They, you know, they're going to get on each other's nerves, you know, because you have different personalities, but highly invest in your staff. That means uh, outings. Um, I know when I was with Lock and even with my own company, we had, you know, holiday meals or, or events. We rented boats. We did things that we just kind of let people kind of reset and not talk about work and just understanding them from a personal perspective because all of us have a personal life and most of us don't probably know about it because we only you know talk to each other about the cases or the services or whatever that you're doing but really investing in your staff and I mean you know uh, training classes things to help them out talk to them during their, their evaluation with them you know what, what, how do they want to grow what do they want to do you know really get to know your staff and, and have a, a, an understanding of their goals to make sure that one, they're aligned to yours, and at the same time, that you, you're providing them a very nurturing environment to, to basically work in, because that actually equates to them producing above and beyond what you, were, you know, originally anticipated that they can do for you. So invest in them. That, that is the number one thing I will always tell anyone, invest in them. Okay. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, Locke, Adeline, and Lisa, you covered a lot of points, and there was a lot of practical advice on uh, HR, legal practices, and so much more. Um, thank you so much. Sorry we ran out of time. That just shows that uh, the demand is there. The questions started popping in um, at the end, and we really appreciate um, your time and uh, professional advice for uh, those who attended the workshop. And with and that, yes. Oh, sorry. If anyone have more questions, and obviously it's an hour, please, you know, I, I'm not sure. You're more than welcome to reach either Locke and myself. You know, we would love to, you know, provide anyone with any resources or even answer any more questions. That may and, and part of being the member of uh, uh, the uh, Asian Chamber is that uh, uh, that platform where we can help each other out. And our, uh, the member success is the chamber success uh, too. So those those are things that uh, correlate together. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank and you, Mark. Bye-bye.